da di da 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 di da. Puffy, you little hairball. Oh, you ate my mold. Puffy, you've been on my case since the day I met Bernie. Knock it off. Some more. Harvey. I already had three helpings. I'm not a big fish eater. Oh, he's <laughs> right. I think you're the one that deserves a promotion. What do you say, Bernie? But Miriam doesn't even have a job. <laughs> well, I'm delighted you all enjoyed it. I'll just run out now and get the dessert and the coffee. Lucky for you, you didn't ruin everything, stupid cat. Puffy, you're really getting on my nerves. Go on, scat. I said scat! You, the moose killed the cat. The moose did it. He was bad. We ate bad moose? Yes, Sherlock, we ate bad moose. Oh, my God, Miriam, we ate bad moose. Stop saying that. And we've got to go out there and tell them. Wait a minute. Everything is going so well. This could really spoil everything. What are you insane? I just poisoned your bosses and all their wives. Now you go out there and tell them I'm going to call the paramedics. Who, me? Yes, you. Me? You know, get out there and tell them. Oh, my God. Harvey, I... <laughs> Helen... <laughs> Eleanor... It's Nancy. I... I... I can't tell you how much being a vice president of Goodrich Tire would have meant to me. The opportunity you Barney, given... Barney, this is no time for testimonials. I will get to the point. I, I would... Li <laughs> Friends, this seems to be a little problem. But you know that delicious mousse you just finished? Oh, that was wonderful. The eighth poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, I'm not kidding. It's poisoned. It killed the cat. Puffy's dead.
Just shut up, Bernie. It wasn't my fault. Tell that to Helen, if she makes it. <laughs> I suppose you're gonna blame me now because the old bat nearly had a coronary? I blame you for everything. You've ruined my reputation. You destroyed my career. And you killed my cat! If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a career. You're the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I am the only thing that's ever happened to you, you putz. And as for your precious cat. Oh, Jesus. The cat. do with Puffy? I don't care. You decide it was your cat. I'm going to bed. Just make sure you wear gloves. My first wife always loved you, Puffy. We should never have divorced, Natalie. Your first wife? I heard that. That kook? She wasn't crazy. She was just a little weird. What did they do to you down there, Puffy? You're stomach and your brains. I'm telling you, that woman should be film director Vittorio De Sica once said, Sono bono, marona mia, che faccio da son di digere. I have no idea what that means. I don't speak Italian. And uh, if you do, please mail in for a free prize. Uh, the next films coming up, two of them is Vermin, another one of the Comedy Central series films, and Seeing is Believing, star in, blah, starring Gilbert Gottfried. I won't try to do his accent. It's annoying enough just to have him in the movie. But he's a genius, so enjoy. Uh, men without hats! Safety dance! Uh, saga! On the loose! Uh, rat! They had a bunch of them, didn't they? It was supposed to be one hit wonders. They had round and round. You're in love. Did you already get Carla yell rat? Yeah. But they had more than one hit, didn't they? Round and round? No, I think he yelled rat with one T. We got a rat in the store? I'll go lay some traps. You might as well advertise we're infested, you do that. No, we gotta capture it ourselves before any customers get in here. Jeez, this is the month of the regional manager's surprise inspection. I've got just the thing. You gotta get out before the spin. Yeah. Hey, look, I saw something like this in the movie Alien. What we do is we use the fire to frighten it into the trash can. We take it out into the woods and we set it free the way nature intended it. And burn down half the store in the process? Save your big flamethrower for the Venusians, Marlon Perkins. I'm gonna go get a baseball bat and a can of Raid. It's huge, but I found some hollow points in the Lucky Charms. What? Are you nuts? Do you know how dangerous this thing is? We don't need to kill anything, man. We just need to trap it, and we'll take it out and set it free in the wild the way nature intended it. Oh, good plan, Jim Fowler. Let me tell you something. You're not going to be singing Born Free when this thing is gnawing on your leg. It's as big as a dog. Well, listen, Dinsdale, if I see Spiny Norman, I'll ask him not to snack on my tibia. You pansy, it's a rat. Are you afraid of a rat? It's probably just as scared of us as we are of... Jesus! I'd really like to apologize for this macho outburst. We're gonna need a bigger gun. It's about time.
why, man. I was starting to run out of air freshener. Oh, that explains the cloying scent of Sienna Sunset. Get behind me! Sayonara, cheese eater! Hey, who took the shotgun out of the Fruit Loops? Pepe! Pepe? Yeah, that's the dog I brought back from Venezuela. That's not a dog. That's a giant sewer rat. Oh, that explains these cuts and scratches he gives me whenever I give him a piggyback ride. Oh, oh my God, he bit you? Oh, he was only fooling around. I see angels in my pudding every Halloween. Never bring little animals home from the wild to your house. My friend Bill did that with a little injured raccoon. It got well, ate $2,000 worth of his tropical fish, and then raped his Davy Crockett hat. Goodbye, Pepe! Get him over me! Get him over me! Get him over me! some pictures of my computers? No, thanks. Uh, I brought my own. But really? Then do you mind if I sit down? Not at all. Go right ahead. So, do you come here a lot? <sighs> she, she had a sudden toothache. 14 women tonight had sudden toothaches? Maybe it's contagious. Maybe it's your glasses. You know, you should try something more stylish. Designer glasses. Hey, what? Designer glasses? Hey, I like them. I don't think so. Oh, what about contact lenses? My friend Louis just had a set surgically implanted. For an extra 150 bucks, they even threw in X-ray vision. X-ray vision? Are you comfortable? All righty, Mr. Snats. Once I put these new lenses in, your vision will be perfect. And don't forget the x-ray vision. <laughs> don't be afraid, Mr. Snats. This procedure is absolutely painless. Nurse, my anesthetic, please. Works every time. <laughs> Mr. Snats, Mr. Snats, we're finished. How's your vision? Great. Can you read that eye chart? Expletive deleted. Made in Japan. Very good, Mr. Snats. Now, if you want the x-ray vision, all you have to do is press this button. <laughs> Now, coming up is a film called Dream Analysis Hotline, which, if you must know, is my personal favorite. It deals with the surrealistic kind of way to interpret dreams. I love that sort of stuff. It's interesting to me. It's interesting to people who have a psychology to them that is interesting. Hello, Dream Analysis Hotline. Freudian special this week. What can I do for you? I dreamed last night I was at my mother's funeral, and a clown walked up and handed me a typewriter. All right, all right, I gotcha. Okay, mother's funeral. 
Play them with typewriter. It was so strange. What do you think it means? Did you forget to send your mother a birthday card this year? Uh, I did. Thanks a lot. Hey, no problem, pal. Thanks for calling. Hello, Dream Analysis Hotline. What can I do for you? Oh, hello. I'm calling to ask you about a very strange dream I had last night. I found myself at a castle and a fat man asked me to dance. All right, all right, I gotcha. Castle, castle. Got it. Okay, fat man. Got a fat man eating, fat man sleeping. Are you sure it wasn't maybe a fat man roller skating? No, no, it was a fat man dancing. Jeez, I, I don't know, lady, it ain't on the chart here. Dick, uh, hold on a minute, uh, let me put you on the speakerphone, I'll get my boss. Ah, uh, make it quick. Hey, Marty, I got a lady in a castle dancing with a fat man and it ain't on the chart. Lady, you sure it ain't a fat lady singing? Quel espèce idiot, fat man dancing, merde! Lady, did you say merde? Yes, it means shit in French. I know what it means. You aren't French, are you? Yes, I am. Here's your problem, schmucko. You're using the wrong chart. Oh, how about that, Marty? Here it is. Fat man dancing. Uh, doing the jerk man? Yes. Like you. It says here you got the hots for your dentist. No, that's impossible. But then again, he is so gentle. I guess you're right. Merci bien. No problem, ma'am. Thanks for calling. Since when do you speak French? Just the curse words. Oh. This next film, the last film, is called How to Be an American. It stars a big star in Japan by the name of Tamayo Atsuki. It was made for the New York Toyota Comedy Film Festival thing. And good night. It was nice meeting you all. Take it easy. And uh, thank you for watching. That's me. I'm with my father at the sushi bar in Tokyo, Japan. I always thought I was a great waitress, but sometimes I had trouble handling the pressure. My customers were always rushing, rushing, rushing me. I wish that I could go to America where everyone is nicer. I can't believe this. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It's okay. Ah, then please don't forget my tip. <laughs> Tamayo, how many times do I have to tell you? There's no tipping in Japan. It is an honor to serve a customer. Tipping is for those money hungry Americans. You like America so much? Go there! My father said it would be good for his health if I took a vacation. He even gave me some food for the trip. I can't believe it. I'm going to America. Isn't this great? Ah, uh, excuse me, Misa. How did you get into the cockpit? Hey, look down. I think I see it. But it's lots of smaller than I thought. Miss, you're looking at Hawaii. Oh my gosh, we are falling! 
Please, somebody tell my father I still love him. Lady, we're not falling, we're landing. Now, please let go of my leg. I was so happy to be finally in New York and see all these great American things. <laughs> I'm sending a postal card to my father. This one is called Liberty at Last. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What the hell is your problem? What the hell was my problem? I had some very serious thinking to do. I went to the most quiet place I could find in New York. I realized my Japanese way would not work in New York. I had to learn how to be more American. If I could be like them, then maybe they would be nicer to me. Some Japanese politicians say that Americans are lazy. They want to get paid a lot of money to do nothing. So, I looked for a job like that. I told the agency the truth. I didn't know how to be an escort. But they said I could learn on the job. They said I would get $200 an hour just to turn tricks. I wonder what that meant. Then I understood. Escort service, turning tricks, they wanted me to be a... Maybe he didn't like magic. In Japan, I heard about people called couch potatoes. Maybe I could be more American if I become a couch potato. It sounded like fun. All I had to do was watch a lot of television. But I wasn't a very good couch potato. Maybe I was still too Japanese. I accidentally watched PBS. And I learned to give CPR. And I learned how to cook Swedish food. And I learned how to build a house. When I told my roommate that I could build a house, she said, wow, how soon can you move out? What an attitude. Maybe Americans are not as nice as I thought. This was my last attempt to become an American. If this didn't work, I would just give up and go back to Japan. I noticed that Americans love junk food. So I ordered a pepperoni pizza. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't do it. The pizza wasn't making me American. It was making me sick. I'm sorry, it's my first time eating pizza. No, I don't believe it. Get the hell out of here. Hey, where are you going? Hey, you Americans, I just don't understand you. If you tell a Japanese person, Compared to Japanese people, Americans are really rude. I can do that.
a long time ago. Now I totally understand this country. I found a job where the customers love me no matter what I do to them. The fat guy at the hotel was right. I am some kind of a comedian. In fact, I'm a master of rudeness. And the Americans love it. They have such a great sense of humor. Even my rude roommate. America, we are else in the world do people love you for being such an idiot?